Hello everybody, I'm SP and welcome to my show I Love TCAP where I go over segments of Dateline to Catch a Predator. Uh, this is episode I think 16 by now. <laughs> I've done so many of these I'm starting to lose count. But let me start with a little story. A couple days ago I just happened to be looking through some, uh, some old episodes and I came across a request. Somebody actually made a request for a predator so i will be checking that predator out i'm sorry if you're still watching and i completely just missed your request i will make i'm again i'm very sorry but here we are doing it so today's episode we'll be looking over chris urban the dirty predator the one that brings the the vodka that's like way watered down <laughs> so let's get started we will be watching uh, an uncut um one that has some commentary from chris as well uh, some episodes have it, some episodes don't have it. I, I, I apologize, I've never really kept up with, you know, do I go for the ones that have the commentary, do I go for the ones that don't have the commentary? I kind of just always pick whatever I can find, because it's not always easy to find the right segment. So, here we go. All the attention we had received from the first two investigations would prevent men from showing up. And I worried that we'd come back with nothing but video of me, you know, pacing around a kitchen by myself. That wasn't the case. Before he, yeah, so he's talking about, um, he had, by now he had mentioned, he had thought everybody would not be, hmm everybody had seen the show and that nobody would be showing up anymore they would be afraid to get caught and that is just not the case i think this is halfway through the end halfway through the uh, series and he still has half a series to go so love the irony <laughs> hold on let's see if i can remind if i can rewind it you can see the irony i'm talking about that wasn't the case and right there, you see he's wearing a DEA sh uh, a DEA hat, but has a weed plant on his shirt. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's good irony. Okay, let's keep watching. Oh, he's also on drugs. I'm, I'm pretty sure they said he was on drugs just now. So there's that. What's up? Okay. No. I, I've I've done a couple episodes where I've missed this, but I, I will talk about it now. The screen name. Right there, there's a screen name. Mr. AKA Six Pack So Caliph. So Caliph? Whatever. But uh, that's a screen name. I, I guess he has a six pack, or maybe he's talking about beer. I don't know. He, he is a drinker. But I don't know. That's, that's kind of a boring one. It, it's, nothing, it's nothing too crazy. It's a little douchey, but it's nothing too bad, I guess. All right. Real tweaky. I wash my hands, right? The Riverside investigation was scheduled to last three days. By the second day, we had 35 men Jeez. visit our house, including this guy who shows up to meet a girl half his age. He comes in and he's, he's jittery, he's jazzed up. Yeah, he's real. And he goes to wash his hands. Well, I'm watching from the next room. And, you know, I don't like every approach to be the same. Paper towels right over here. Okay. So I grab a paper towel. He sees me and I hand it to him. And at first he just thinks, oh, gee, thanks. And then there's this, you know, he figures out that this is going to be a problem. Okay, so I also like to talk about Chris's entrances. I don't think that's a bad entrance. I actually think that's one of the better ones <laughs> where he comes in and he's, he's helping the guy. He gives him paper towels and he, he helps him. I, I, always, I thought that was... I thought that was a pretty funny one. No, no zinger, unfortunately. Uh, Chris does usually have good zingers, but yeah, no zinger for this one. Should you uh, have a seat right over on the uh, stool there, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, who are you? I'm Chris. Chris. Yeah. And who did you come to see, Chris? Um. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? I'm sorry. Oh, can't you? Can't. What an uncomfortable way to sit on a chair. But I don't, I don't know. I, unfortunately, I'm a square, so I don't know a lot about drugs. But the way he's washing his hands seems a little suspicious to me. How he's trying to get all of that off of him. I don't know. I could be, I could be once again showing how much of a square I am here. But 
Yeah, he's, you know, shaky. He looks like he's on some kind of a drug. And in fact, later, uh, police found methamphetamines in his car. Mm. You came to see Kelly. Still. Mm -hmm. And how old is Kelly? Kelly's way too young for me. Way too young for you? Yeah. Then why did you come here, Chris? I came here to tell her that, actually. To tell her that she was way too young? Actually, I did, yeah. 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 I swear I'm not. You know, I, I really need to categorize the excuses that predators give because this is a special category. I, I know I keep breaking in here, but this is a special category of I've, I've come here to tell them I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> like that's that's a yeah, that's a very special category of predator excuse. So you drove all the way from where? I drove from Rancho because I was tempted at first and then I uh, and then I was thinking on the way down here. I was like, you know what? I can't really do this. I don't feel right in my conscience. Like, I'm a conscience type person. Yeah, I could tell and you were a conscience type person by. You say rancho? Very, 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 very conscious. Yeah, like, yeah, and then I was going to come here and tell her, you know, I don't want to do anything. I didn't bring any condoms. Or anything. You did not? No, you know, so. I mean, you can take them out of your pocket now. I know from the chat that the decoy had asked him to bring condoms. So I asked him, and he reaches into minutes. his pocket. Uh, I brought this. Sorry, I was looking at the distance that I think he drove. I think this is in L.A. So he drove from Rancho Cucamonga to L.A. That's about 40 minutes. Not the farthest drive, but still pretty far to just come and tell somebody you're not going to hang out with them. Let me back up a little bit. I can't really do this. I don't feel right in my conscience. Like, I'm a conscience type person. Yeah, I could tell conscience type person. you're a conscience type person by I'm your Very, your, very, by your very chat conscience. Here. Yeah, like, yeah. and then what I was going to come here and tell her, you, you know, I don't want to do anything. I'm a conscious type person. You did not. No, you know, so. I mean, you can take them out of your pocket now. I know from the chat that the decoy had asked him to bring condoms. So I asked him, and he reaches into his pocket. I, mean, I brought this, but this is really watered down. You can even test it. <laughs> that's way watered down. Way watered down. Yeah, way watered down. I think that's funny. <laughs> it's like, like a cartoon, especially if they didn't show him pull it out of his pocket. But just like if he turned his back and just pulled a big ass bottle out of out of nowhere, I thought that would have been funny. It's, it's still funny to see him pull it out of his pocket, a bottle of vodka that's way watered down. What is that? It's a one fifty one, but I put it was this much left, and I put I put a bunch of water in it. So. You did, yeah. It was. And, and that was why. Why'd you do that? Because I didn't want to. I didn't. I I wanted to leave it here when I left and just say here you can have this, and that's that's. Yeah, you know. of course. So you were gonna you come over here and say, look, uh, do me a favor though, and just keep your hands out of your pockets, unless oh, you're no, getting that's, your condoms out of there. That's fine. Unless yeah, you're getting your condoms get and put them right on the counter. Yeah, yeah there is one, but it's no good. It's I always good. carry it with me. It was always in my wallet, and I took it out of my right. wallet when I was in my car, and. Uh, I've never yeah. noticed how full of excuses no, this guy I have is. Nothing to, I honestly was going to come here and tell her I didn't want to do anything. Right. And tell her, you know what, you're worry. extremely young for this. Right. You know? So I you said, were going to come here and tell 13-year-old Kelly that uh, There's a chat you didn't want to yeah. do, do anything with her. I really here's didn't. some Bacardi rum and... Uh, I was actually oh, it was rum. Oh, okay. I always thought it was vodka. He brought rum. He brought watered-down rum. That sounds tasty. Sounds like something a 13-year-old would enjoy. Yeah, I was actually, kind of, did honestly, you transmit this uh, photograph? Oh my. I I sent, I didn't know I sent that one. <laughs> you didn't know? Well, actually, yeah, I did, but wow. I wasn't thinking of. I didn't know I sent it. Well, actually, I did. Okay, wow. <laughs> to a 13-year-old girl? I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. I know. I wasn't thinking. And then he says, and we hadn't heard this before. You look at me, I didn't even take a shower. If I was coming to do something like that, I would have I would have taken a shower, you know? I mean, that's that's the first thing you do. How old are you? you? Know? Okay, so I'm going to break in and just say that doesn't really line in. We'll line up. Because he said he decided on the way there that he wasn't going to do anything. So he just didn't take a shower. So he expected to have sex with this 13-year-old after not taking a shower. So... Either he's just making himself out to be more scummy, or he's lying, which is also scummy. So you just you just take both of them, honestly. I'm 26 years old, sir. 26 years old, and I really, you are I really feel bad. The I know, the girl you I thought know. you were gonna come see. Like I really feel bad, dude. Like I mean, I don't even know how to tell you how I feel bad. Now I was nope, more. <laughs> worried, like so. Now you like, go on and do this. I, I'm sorry, you know, I, because I was desperate sitting at home, I did, and it's not right to do, you're right, they should have, like, control things on those chat rooms. Would you answer the door naked? <laughs> Finally, when... 
I love the pause there. Would you answer the door naked? <laughs> Sorry. Confronted with the, uh, the transcripts, you know, he admitted that it didn't look good. I really wasn't even gonna come down here. Yeah, but you and, did. Yeah. And, and when I, I did because I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. I didn't want somebody to be absolutely hurt, okay? And sit there and go, oh my gosh, you didn't show up. You know, and, and I'm really like a conscious person. I mean, look at me, I, I'm so dirty, like, I know. Oh, well, I tell you what's dirty. <laughs> Wait, before Chris has that singer, I've always remembered. I, I think Onision. I always, when I see this segment, I, I think of Onision because Onision, when he was being called a groomer, said the same thing. I'm so dirty. <laughs> I think he started wiping mud on his face too, or whatever. Onision's a weirdo, but I always think of Onision when he says that. I'm really like a conscious person. I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm so dirty. Like, I know. I well, I tell you what's dirty is this conversation. You know what? Yeah, I know. I, I really should. Dirty is this conversation. Don't, absolutely. Yes, don't take my blank out of your mouth till I'm yeah, done. I, I, I know. Oh look, God. if somebody's telling me in the interview that, <laughs> you know, they've got an addiction or a compulsion that led them to this situation, you have to say, look, you're an adult. Having recognized that, Perhaps you should have done something about it before you ended up walking into this house. Yeah, I was not fantasizing. Now, what he just said there is inter Oop, hit the mic. Is interesting because that, that's a bit of that accountability. Like you should be able to take accountability for doing something like this. But at the same time, you know, they say addiction can lead you to really weird stuff. You know, and it's like I. I People with, I, there are there are tons of people with addictions who who haven't hit on minors. That's all I'm saying. I don't, I, I know a lot of addiction leads to, is connected with money and trying to get money so you can feed your addiction. I don't see what addiction has to do with hitting on a minor. So, I I can see how it can snowball to making bad decisions. I can see how addiction can snowball to making bad decisions. I can't see how addiction leads you to do this. So I, I understand, you know, I I could sit here and come up with I can sit here and come up with a, a scenario. I guess I'm not going to, but I like it's a very it's very thin. It's very it's very thin. The 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 story. It's very soft. I guess I don't know. It's not it's not a good story, but I, I can't see I can't see how addiction would lead to that. I, again, I can probably come up with a story for it. I don't know. Think about a 13 year old for God's sake, you know, that, that's not right to do everything. Would you ever else. have two guys all over you? Wow. Uh, it's just, like wow. I said, Double fantasy three What would over. you do with two? Yeah, it's just wanting to hear. And, and now, do you uh, know that it's illegal? Do you, do you, I figured it had the parent. No, I didn't know that it was illegal. Illegal to send this kind of material? I did not know that. I to really didn't. somebody who you believe is underage? I, I did not know that. That's against the oh law. Oh my God. Like, Here's what you need to know, Chris. <laughs> and that is that, that, uh, that I'm. Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story please, on people who go, well, you're welcome to leave and take your stuff with please. you. But if there's anything else you'd like to say, um, please tell us. No. If not, take the Bacardi. When Water he down left Bacardi. the house, I didn't know that he was on probation. Oh my God, what a disaster. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the way they were standing there, just talking over each other. What a disaster. Obviously, that made his situation worse. And yeah, being on probation ultimately, made it worse. He was arrested. Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Please don't do this, please. Because I really wasn't going to do this. Go ahead and cuff him. Sir? Sir? What? Do like, you have anything illegal on you? No, yes, sir. Do you have any drugs or anything speed. like that? When's the last time you used speed? I used it about two months ago, sir. Is it two months ago usually means two days or two hours? I am on probation for it. What are you on probation for? For, for possession in July, and that's the last time I used it. It's been a few months. For now, possession you, of meth? Yes. Yeah, I did use an hour ago. Yeah. Uh -oh. No, I'm not trying to get rid of it, sir. I really am not. <laughs> Oh, look at I that. I know it's only because I have to sign up for a class. I hadn't used it in since I had gotten in trouble with it back in July. And I was reality sets in, dude. Look, yeah. Look, look, yes, reality sets in right when I stepped out my front door. You're right. It did. Yeah, it did. And you're exactly right. That's where no, the crime it, occurred. Uh, no, the minute you stepped out your front door. Okay, well, I'm not going to want them to argue with him or anything. Uh, I will look and, sh and see if I can find a picture of him nowadays. Uh, let's see. What do I feel like revealing? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's see what is his name? Chris Urban. 
if I can spell correctly. Now, I heard some actually good stuff about him that he actually may have turned his, his uh, life around. Uh, what is this? Oh, let's see, it's a Sting, there's a Sting aftermath. Uh, there's him post Sting, so. Uh, I think he got a job too, so that's great. Um, Okay, so that's that's pretty interesting. Apparently, uh, found faith in God since this thing. <laughs> so that's interesting. <laughs> uh, and then down here, uh, here's where Chris talks about the weird thing about labeling him as a sex, as a sex predator. That's something I always talk about uh, on this show. Is that it's always weird to con to uh, con to classify someone as a sex predator on this show because they don't always come off as predators. Like I said, they've caught actual monsters on this show and they caught people who were just thinking with their dick. I think Chris Urban was thinking with his dick and wasn't thinking this completely through. Uh, I can't really, I mean, there, there's that, he's, he's found God, so, and, and I, I've seen somewhere that he's, uh, it's somewhere they found a job. I can't remember. Um, oh, let's just read this. Urban was arrested immediately by Lieutenant Chad Bianco. That's. Uh, uh, let's see. He needed to follow appropriate and effective methods, which he claimed were not followed. Okay. Still making excuses by the second one. Let's try to. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not finding anything. But yeah, I, I remember. I can't remember where I heard it from. Maybe it's on Reddit. I'm not going to go on Reddit right now. But I've, I've heard good things about him uh, since then. And so here's hoping that there's some good stuff for him since then. Uh, vice president of a family owned business. There you go. There, there, that's, that's pretty good for him. So good for him. Turned his life around probably off drugs now if he's a vice president at a family owned business uh god how old does that make him now 50, 50 something i'm not gonna do the math maybe 45 i don't know <laughs> but that, that's really it thanks for watching everyone and uh bye